What are your cards? I got a six, a five, a jack, a four, and an eight. I win. What do you mean you win? I had a hand just like that before. I didn't win. Because I win. This is bull****. All right, take it easy, man. How many times different cards he still wins? My parents are moving to Florida right now, and they dropped off a bunch of knickknacks and various memorabilia items from my childhood inside of the Ninja Turtle toys, the originals, some old Star Wars toys, and some awesome DVDs and CDs. Looks like ancient history to a kid right now. They have no idea what the hell a VHS cassette is. Inside of some of these VHS cassettes are some cool little old notes, scribblings, things like that. I mean, again, ancient history stuff, and one of the VHS cassettes was Home Alone 2. Home Alone 2, a classic because the story is pretty awesome and also because Donald Trump's in it. Remember, Donald Trump tells Kevin McAllister how to get to the front desk at the hotel that he owns. Excuse me, where's the lobby? Down the hall and to the left. Thanks. Funny story about that is that Donald Trump actually let them film for free inside the plaza if he got to be in the movie. Making deals, baby. Donald Trump saving Christmas and not the first time he did that. He actually went on and saved Christmas again as president. He said, we're going to save Christmas again. They don't use the word Christmas because it's not politically correct. You go to department stores and they'll say Happy New Year and they'll say other things and it'll be red. They'll have it painted, but they don't say, well, guess what? We're saying Merry Christmas again. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. But anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. What I wanted to talk about here is another member of the Home Alone 2 cast, Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider is a famous actor. He is someone who has been in a lot of movies. Got his start on Saturday Night Live, was a classic character in some of the greatest skits to ever be broadcast on American television. Rob Schneider, one of the best bit characters in SNL history. Rob Schneider went on to have a ton of movies call him up and say, yo, we want to make a male gigolo comedy called Deuce Bigelow. <laughs> we, want, we want to make a movie called Hot Chicks. It's not, it's not high art, but it's great. These are some great movies he's been in. The Animal, when Rob Schneider becomes an animal. 51st Dates, Big Daddy, Don't Mess with the Zohan. Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo? <laughs> Didn't even know that existed. Grown Ups? Yo, Rob Schneider's been in a lot of stuff. But as much as we like Rob Schneider's filmography, we really like a piece of content that was put out just this week from The Blaze. Glenn Beck interviewing Rob Schneider about his take on life, man. And it was pretty amazing. Rob Schneider is a conservative. You can go on Twitter and you can see that he's very based. Rob Schneider definitely went to the pharmacy and definitely picked up a bottle of red pills. Rob Schneider was spitting red pills on Glenn Beck's program with The Blaze and was saying some amazing things, including why he knew Saturday Night Live was dead as soon as they created a pithy kind of like make your skin call, crawl like repulsive video of Kate McKinnon as Hillary Clinton after Hillary Clinton lost in 2016 playing the piano and like crying. Yo, this is not comedy. That's activism and it's cringe activism at that. So Rob Schneider said that that was the moment that he knew that his former employer was finished. One of the things is I travel around this country and try to perform and, you know, not indoctrinate people like some <laughs> comedy shows seem to be doing these days. <laughs> Indo- not Saturday Night Live. Indo- yeah, well, <laughs> well, I mean, I hate to crap on my old show. I hate to crap on my old show. But when I saw when <laughs> Hillary Clinton lost, which is understandable. Mm-hmm. She was yes. Not exactly the most likable yeah. person in the room. Right. And then when Kate McKinnon went out there, on Saturday Night Live from the cold opening, and I was like, she started dressed as Hillary Clinton, and she starts playing Hallelujah, and I said, I literally prayed to please have a joke at the end. Don't do this. Please don't go down there. And there was no joke at the end, and I went, it's over. It's over. It's, it's not going to come back. And I said, it really is the end of... It's gone. You can, 
you can take the comedy routines, the, com the comedy routines. You can take the comedic indoctrination process happening with each of the late night hosts mm -hmm. and you could exchange them with each other. That's how you know that's not interesting anymore because there's no, there's no, it's not an independent voice anymore. It's and just it's... all indoctrination by comedic imposition. The interview went on into very fascinating territory. Glenn Beck asked him a number of questions about his worldview and what he thinks about Hollywood and profession, the profession of acting and comedy. Rob Schneider had some remarkable things to say, but some things we talk about on this program a lot, which is that becoming a father and becoming a good man in society and wanting to raise your children is the greatest stake you can possibly have in a country. It makes you really want to create a better society for your children. That's alpha male energy right there. That's the kind of energy that saves a country. Rob Schneider's got it. Even though Rob Schneider stands a full five foot two tall, he is a giant of a figure when it comes to Hollywood actors who've seen the starlight of fame and have come out on the other side, uh, not warped freaks. Listen to Rob Schneider talk about how he does everything for his children. For what you believe. Absolutely. Yeah. Because because if we don't have it, then we have nothing. Mm -hmm. I want to. I'm not. I'm not. I don't care about my career anymore. Mm -hmm. I care about my children's. Me too. The country that they're going to live in, and my hope is this. My hope is a beautiful story from a, from a um, from a chaplain in England. When the American flyers came over in the early days of World War II, when the American Flyers came over after, this is like the dog days, 1942, late 42, when like their friends were getting blown out of the sky. They would go over on the bombers and half would come back, two thirds would come back, you know, but they were dying. And there was one particularly awful um, week, two weeks, where there was a, a very high percentage of these pilots were getting blown out of the sky and getting killed. And, um, they went to the um, prison. They went to the to the uh, to the Air Force chapel, and they, the pilot said, "Why?" He said, "Our friends are dying. Why should we do this? Why should we get up tomorrow and fly?" They did this at like literally four forty-five. They're supposed to leave five thirty. Why should we do this? Tell us why. They didn't say they weren't going to do it. So tell us why we should do this. Our friends are dying. Tell us. And the chaplain was really, you know, woke up and said, um, well, humanity has come, out of a, has come out of the dark ages. We've come out of where people get burned at the stake. People believe and, and go along with this. And there's a darkness that we have come out of and doing a more of an enlightened period, a more freer period. And he said, this is a step back into those darkness. And these are the darkest parts. Mm -hmm. of humanity and we need to stand up for that now and that requires this so they all flew we are uh, there again yeah and it requires a new set of flyers Pretty cool stuff there. We talk a lot about the collapse of comedy, about the uh, seething, weepy leftists on this program who have no sense of humor, who have no guts, who have no ability to live inside of a world where uh, everyone doesn't just like slobber and agree with them at all times. They hate the fact that there is a counterculture being built that they can't control and that disagrees with them. And that's okay because we like watching them cry and we like drinking their delicious salty tears. And we were able to do that with Rob Schneider one time, one single time, at a party that was thrown by the Daily Wire. Daily Wire had hired Gina Carano to do a big picture with them called Terror on the Prairie. They had a really cool party and, uh, you know, a, a, a red carpet uh, party for the movie premiere. And Rob Schneider was sitting there uh, in the audience. We got to chat with him. The guy's super cool, man. He's like the just most humble neatest down-to-earth guy and we're really really happy to have finally met rob schneider uh and to get a chance to really pick his brain after talking with him dude this guy is just the real deal it's neat to see people go through the sewer pipes that is hollywood and come out on the other side uh, more active and activated to help and save their country and this guy is 
This guy's it. Also, his daughter's name's L. King. You may know her because she is a famous country music star and pop star. So Rob Schneider, making a legacy for yourself, man. Way to go. Rob Schneider, the hero of the moment and one of the bassists. Hats off to you, man. Here's your tip. Thank you for watching. Our channel is here to meme the libs until they cry and then to meme them crying. Their tears taste like ice cream. We ridicule the establishment and we do so because of you. Your support keeps us going. So if you liked what you saw, please click the thumbs up. Please punch, subscribe, and ring the bell to let you know when we have a new video. Don't you want us to let you know when we're live? Please check out more of our videos here and sign up for our mailing list in case something happens and the plug gets pulled. We want to be able to keep in touch with you. My name is Benny Johnson and thank you for watching Based Patriots Stay Free.